I took a break from the harsh Colorado winter and I came down here to the Caribbean. The only tea I took with me is green tea and so I thought uh, let's tell you how to choose green tea. In this video I will give you a lot of tips to distinguish between good and bad green tea, so keep watching. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. Have you ever wondered why serious tea drinkers don't really drink a lot of green tea, while green tea is so popular among uh, casual tea drinkers? Well, one of the main reasons why uh, we um, serious tea drinkers snob uh, green tea is because uh, the quality of the green tea available in the Western world is poor. So when you start really taking uh, seriously your tea and you really look to improve the quality, you realize that you don't find the satisfaction anymore in the green tea you find on the market. Well, in this video I will give you some tips to keep on enjoying green tea also when you get serious about tea. Before uh, telling you all these tips, we have to introduce a, a few uh, concepts that uh, will allow you understanding a little bit better everything that comes afterwards. The first thing to speak about is how producers set the price of tea. You might think that uh, the price of tea is set according to its quality. However, the producer don't really do that. The criteria they use to set the price of the tea they produce is actually the harvest day, the aspect of the leaf, and also the quantity of the crop. So let's look into that. Why? Because if the tea is from early spring, no matter if it tastes good or bad, the price will be high. Also because the leaf aspect, the, how the leaves look like in those early uh, days of the spring, uh, of the spring harvest, is the best. They have all very small leaves, in some cases even just buds. They all look very even, all, very, all the same. So the average uh, Chinese tea buyer that have, doesn't have a lot of experience with high quality tea, they pick the tea just by the look. And so having a nice small leaf is a reason for buying it. Moreover, another aspect is the quantity of the crop. So if it is a, a, a spring, for example, where you have a frost just because uh, before the, um, the plants start flushing, then uh, you will have a smaller crop because some of uh, the bushes are damaged. If you have a smaller crop, then the producer would set the price higher no matter the quality. So what I want to say with that, I want to say that the price of the tea of green tea is not necessarily an indication of the quality. Now, it can be, it can be, and certainly very good green tea is pricey, but it's not a, a KO criteria, let's say. Now, another concept that we have, introduced, we have to introduce, it is how Western retailers source green tea. Western tea shops have mainly two options to source green tea. They can source the green tea by some wholesaler in the Western world, or can they, buy, they can buy the tea directed by the producer in the country of origin. Now, the, the former method, buying uh, the tea directly from the wholesaler, is of course the easier one, right? They, they have just to make a call, they get some sample from a, um, a wholesaler that is based, let's say, in, uh, in Europe, and then they can taste the tea and then pick up the one, with the one they want, which is the problem with that. First of all, wholesaler in Europe and in the US, in most of the case, rely on other wholesaler in the country of origin. These wholesalers need very large quantity of the same tea. So what they do, they take, for example, let's say Longing from very different sources, from that very different farmers and factories and producer, from very different harvest day, and they put everything together. Now, this way, they achieve the larger quantity that they need to sell, but they have also the advantage that they can reach a more even and consistent taste among different years, smoothing down, the, smoothing down the variations that you have normal with the harvest and agriculture, with the weather year by year. 
Now, which is the problem with that? The problem is that they can also in this way mix good quality and bad qualities and also that the very, very top quality tea the level is always, let's say, lower by mixing it with other teas. And moreover, I have to tell you that producers in China take care through which channel they sell their best tea. So if I, am, uh, if I have a family-driven business, my best uh, uh, green tea, for example, my best Birochun, is sold usually in China to other shops that will sell it a single batch. Now, there is also another problem with the uh, wholesaler. Wholesaler tends to ship the tea from the country of origin to Europe and America in the cheapest way possible, which is by cargo ship, not by plane. So what happens in this case, the, your tea will stay in a cargo ship for more than a month, and this will affect the taste, but I will come to that uh, in a second. We say there are two methods. One we've just explained, buying from the wholesaler, the other one is buying directly by the producer. Now, you have different options to buy directly by the producer. You can travel, for example, to China, go directly to the farmers, visit them, taste the tea and buy the tea directly from there. This is the way we do. We go at least once every year to China and if we go only one time, it always is the spring harvest season because we know that green tea is so critical and we want to be there. And we go directly by the farmer and select the tea from there and take care of the import ourselves. So we ship the tea to ourselves from China. But you have also other options if you are a, a tea shop in Europe or in the US. What you can do, for example, you can buy from other um, retailers. So if you know a retailer that, uh, like you know Nanoshan, for example, and you have a tea shop, you can ask Nanoshan if uh, we source also tea for you. So when we are in China, we can buy also a batch from you and give it to you. Another option is to uh, go to China or uh, to India, for example, and Japan uh, off season. So for example, you go here in summer, you go in in winter, then the producer doesn't have any more the green tea because they have sold everything out, but you can still go in some quality tea shop in China and buy from them. The prices are a little bit different, but you can still find uh, proper quality. Of course, it won't be that fresh. Also, uh, what you can do, you can order samples directly from, uh, from your shop. So without uh, um, moving from your shop, you can simply take contact with some producer, ask them to send over samples, and if they're willing to, they can send you over the samples, then you can taste and you can pick up the one you want and you order back. Now you see that these different methods have a more and more distance from the producer, and the farthest you are from the producer, the lower or the higher, if you want, the risk of quality. Yeah, If you are directly there, you taste the tea, very fresh, just produced yesterday, and you pick out the one you want, you are pretty sure of the quality you get, also because you take the tea with you home. If you order samples, it's always longer, the tea has been uh, shipped for longer time, it has been stored for a longer time, you don't know the conditions, and so the quality, the quality um, decay. One of the reasons why quality tea shop uh, don't uh, tend to buy directly from the producer when uh, especially is about the Chinese green tea or Chinese tea in general actually but green tea is particularly tricky is because of the import uh, um, of the customs duties. So we have different kind of duties depending on the kind of tea and green tea is its is own category. And uh, um, especially in Europe, uh, it is you really have a hard time in understanding all the rules and the law you have to follow. So we personally know also some retailer in Europe that gave up because they were just losing their uh, uh, buying. They were sourcing tea and then it wasn't reaching to their place. So they say, okay, I will give up and uh, I will just buy by wholesaler. I can totally understand that because I've gone through all that process. But luckily enough, we were, let's say, um, enough uh, um, continuous, yeah, in trying, trying, trying until we have really understood how to do that. And moreover, we have the advantage that we go in China and ship the tea ourselves. So we don't do any mistakes because if you allow the Chinese producer to send you the tea, they will do their way. And even if you tell them, no, you should write this, you should do that, they don't do. So, all right, we have to come now to the third concept that is very important to understanding how to select high quality tea 
and this is that green tea is a fresh product. This is an extremely important concept that uh, is uh, not 100% uh, understood by the Western consumer. The fact that green tea is an extremely fresh product, yeah, is the freshest of all tea varieties. You can think of green tea like uh, fresh vegetables or fresh fruits. They decay and degrade very quickly over time. Like if you buy fruit, if you buy vegetable, you want to eat them fresh. Green tea is the same. Why this concept that is well understood in China is not well understood in the Western world? Very simple, because in the Western world, we have very little availability of fresh green tea. So people don't know how fresh green tea tastes. Now, if I now think about the drinking green tea just the first days after the harvest in China, my mouth starts starts uh, watering right like here i have i'm drinking a bilwa chon superior is a very very high quality tea i have been storing this tea in the fridge all the time and still when i drink it i know it is not the same taste as the one that i have when i have when i am there in suzhou and i'm directly at the farm and I, I drink this fresh tea that's an experience that you cannot do any in any other ways and if you want to do that experience you can join us we go every string to china and we bring our customer with us so you can just check on our event uh, event uh, website web page and there you have a lot of information about uh, our next uh, tea tour that you can join anyway now let's speak about a fresh product it is a fresh product this means that like your vegetable and your some of your fruit you have to keep it cool so green tea has to be stored in the fridge. Now, if you order a green tea that is no more fresh because it has been shipped on a cargo ship and has been stayed in the cargo ship over the ocean for 10 weeks, then there is nothing you can do about that. Putting it in a fridge, it doesn't make it better. But if you have a very fresh green tea, then it's very important that you keep it in the fridge. So all the green tea from Nanoshan are stored in fridge that are dedicated to green tea. And even me, myself at home, I have a fridge just for green tea. And uh, when we buy tea in China, for the few weeks that we are there, for very, very high quality tea like this one, we have even uh, fridges in Shanghai, in our warehouse in Shanghai, where we keep the tea before shipping it by plane to Berlin. We ship all green tea and actually the most quantity of all our tea by plane only. Within three days, they are in our storage in Berlin. And here we come also to the point why green tea is a better match to Jamaica than to Colorado. In Colorado is winter, it's cold, and in Jamaica is summer. And green tea is a fresh product, it refreshes you. This morning at the sunrise, I went running along the beach. It was beautiful. And when I came back, I first had breakfast. And after breakfast, I came up here and I started having my bilochon. So it got just, you know, cool you down in a way. And uh, it gives you an effect on your body that you cannot reach with any other tea. If I am in Colorado, when it is snowing, the, least, the last thing I'm thinking about is opening a bag of green tea. All right, so what we have uh, spoken about, I told you three important concepts for understanding the quality of green tea. The first is price. Price is not always an indication of quality, especially for green tea. You will be astonished by some time by which difference in price do not match at all with the, the difference in quality. Try yourself. The second is sourcing. How your tea retailer sourced the tea. Try to find that out. If uh, the closer they are to the region, to the producer, to the farmer, the better will be your tea. The third point is storage. The green tea is a fresh product. Storage starts with transportation from the country of origin. How was your tea stored? Try to find it out because that's extremely important. i make you one example. Um, if you take a very fresh green tea, you put it in the fridge, after one year, it's very difficult to find the difference with the new harvest. I tried myself, I put it in the fridge, I taste them blind and I did it wrong. So it's very, very hard. If you don't put it in the fridge, especially if you live in a country that is a little bit warm over summer, then you will definitely notice a huge difference in taste, even after six months. 
That means that if you buy such a tea bag, you can keep it in a normal uh, shelf. You don't have to put it in the fridge if you consume it just within a couple of months. But it is important that uh, your source, your retailer, use fridges. And now let's speak about uh, a few tips to recognize good and bad green tea. In other words, how can you gather information about the three concepts that I just introduced to you? The first thing I want to talk about is the aspect of the green tea leaves. So let's start speaking about the color of the leaves. How, um, how does the leaves look like in terms of color or if you want in terms of uh, shades of color? So a green tea has, um, um, has a very vivid and lively uh, green tone. So of course it's green, the leaves are green and the green can be both light and can be both uh, can be dark. So if uh, the, the leaves are light or dark is not really an indication of quality. Look for example at these two pictures. On one side you have a floral longin that is very green in color. On the other side you have Luang Guapien that is very dark. But what you can see about these two teas is that both colors are very vivid, are very lively, are very um, brilliant. If you want uh, they look a little bit glossy. Yeah. And this is a very clear indication of high quality tea. Now, for taking the picture that we put on our website, we always use exactly the same setup. And we use exactly the same light. And this has been the case since the time we have um, started NanoShan. So we have always been using the same window, the same light and we do not post process at all. We do not retouch the pictures at all. The only thing we do, we clip the, um, the picture, which means that we simply remove the background to make sure that it is white on white. But the picture of the tea is just as taken by the camera. I made some research online and I searched some picture of bad tea. Uh, or let's say green tea that is not really very fresh and uh, uh, what you're searching is uh, a color of the leaves uh, that is a little bit dull, uh, opaque if you want and uh, um, sometimes uh, the very vivid uh, fresh green color turns a little bit into uh, the direction of grey or even brown and this is something that you really want to avoid so look at the leaves that you are buying and try to understand by the color, by the shade, if it is fresh or if it is, uh, uh, has been stored uh, improperly or for too long, uh, too long of a time. And uh, another point is that uh, the color of the leaves also gives you some indication about the way they were processed. So sometimes farmers do mistake in uh, uh, the, pro the processing of the leaves. Actually, even more often than you would expect. So sometimes they have a very high quality tea, high quality leaf from early spring, and they process it wrongly. It still fetch a very high price, but it doesn't taste very good. So the two typical mistakes is um, when they do the uh, chashu, they kill the green, they may overcook or undercook the leaves. So if they are undercooked, the color is a little bit of a uh, very bright green, a little bit unripe, and the taste is a little bit sore, um, unripe, like an unripe fruit maybe, and you want really to avoid that. Another case is when the tea is uh, um, a little bit, the color of the tea goes in the direction of yellow, might mean that the leaves have been uh, uh, over, um, overcooked and then uh, you might have a little bit of uh, barn taste. So for example longing it has to be um, processed at high temperature if you want to get the typical nutty taste but if the farmer overcook it then the leaves turns too yellow and the taste is just a little bit barn. And now let's speak about the shape of the leaf. We spoke about the color, the shape is another important indication, right? They, there are green tea that doesn't look very nice and they can taste very good, but still, usually, also the aspect of the leaves goes well along with the taste, yeah, if there is no um, mistake in the processing. So what you want, what you can look, uh, what you can learn from the shape of the leaf, you can find out by looking at the shape if it is an early harvest or a later harvest, and also if uh, um, different leaves from different gardens uh, were mixed together. So. If you look at this tea, all the leaves are very tiny and they are very even. So the fact they are tiny, it means that it is an early harvest. And the fact that they are all very similar to each other means that they will, will harvest most probably in the same garden and in the same days.
while if you look at this other long jean you see that the leaves are a little bit coarser some are larger some are smaller so this is an indication that uh, they have mixed uh, leaves from different harvest days so you might have some early earlier spring some later spring of course not the very very early spring because those is sold out certainly as a single batch if you look at this other picture you even see that it's not only the leaves are a little bit coarse but they're also very very different from each other so in this case it might be that they have mixed not only these uh, leaves from different days but also from different producers and now that we have spoken about uh, the uh, aspect of the leaves let's speak about the taste distinguishing high quality tea by taste is certainly the easiest way of doing it but it requires also some practice so what i suggest to you is order different samples from different shops also from shops that you wouldn't usually buy from and that you believe they have lower quality tea maybe you get a surprise maybe not and uh, usually sample doesn't cost that much so some shop offered there even for free so just try to get them get uh, quite a lot of them and possibly from the same type of tea so if you want to compare different bilochun buy 10 samples of different bilochun from different sources or longing anjibai cha luangua pian whatever you want and then try uh, to taste them blind if possible or anyway ask yourself a few questions questions that i suggest you to ask yourself are which tea has the most balanced taste um sorry it's a bit loud you know they are not taking care of course that the fact that i'm uh, making a video i try to speak a bit louder so ask yourself which tea is more balanced ask yourself uh, which is most uh, full of flavor and aroma uh, do you taste any off taste for example is some of the leaves taste a little bit unripe a little bit sore um, some other taste a little bit burn a little bit too warm then those are indications that the tea is not well processed and now we come to the last important aspect ask your dealer if you want to source tea by a new dealer or you want to really find a very reliable source for green tea i give you here a little bit of ideas which kind of question you should ask to your tea dealer to find out more about their tea the first thing you can ask is uh, when the pictures that are on the word website were taken because sometimes you have uh, very fresh uh, pictures that were taken maybe two three years ago then you can ask them how they source their tea do they go to uh, to the um, plantation themselves they buy by wholesaler if you just send them an email they will tell you the way they source tea uh, i have to say unfortunately not everyone is uh, very sincere on that but I mean try your luck get some proof if they tell you yes of course we travel to uh, yeah to the plantation every year and we source the ourselves ask them okay show me some picture uh, which is the link of your blog uh, of your social media so that you can get the feeling that they are telling the truth you can be sure if they do the effort of going there they also want you to know it and they have some kind of blog videos they've done something to um, to show that then ask also about how the tea was shipped if it was shipped by plane or was shipped by ship a cargo ship and also how the tea was stored in their warehouse so this is just to give you a little bit of idea and uh, um, especially say if you're searching you know one or two sources where you plan to buy a lot of tea is definitely worth to um, ask those questions to to the dealer and we always answer and i'm sure that all our colleagues and other shops will definitely do the same and give you the best customer service they can all right i hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, this video i gave you a lot of tips about how to distinguish uh, green tea if you really enjoyed it please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe our channel if you are for the first time here watching and more videos like this will come your way uh, very soon so this is just a start practice yourself very very important taste the tea buy and taste blind that's the best way to learn about the quality of green tea and improving your skill we have done a few videos about blind tasting and will be uh, will be done more in the future all right thank you very much for watching i hope these tips will help you increasing your tea level and i will see you at the next video bye bye